Yeah. I love this live YouTube. You have to just do drum roll for like a couple of minutes for everybody to get signed in. Yes. There he is. Hi, Mark. You have your uh you have to you have to do it yourself. I love this. I love it. You, you have to unmute. Did you unmute it? I think I can hear you. Can you hear me? You can, yes. I never have enough light. This is fantastic. Oh my God. Super, super excited, dude. Super excited. What's up? How goes it, dear? How are you feeling? How's everything? I'm cool. I'm cool. Who knew you were an animal rescue lover? What's all those things moving around in the back? How are you? I'm doing, life is, I, I'm having a hard time making. Can you out the audio from here? My phone is a little sketchy. Should I just hold it like this? Now you're getting really up close and personal. Yeah, look. It's up to you as long as you can hear you. The show's about you, not me. Can you hear me? Barely. Barely. You know what? I'm going to turn off this. Uh... Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. How's that? Better? Much. Much better? Yes. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right. So this is why I love this live stream shit. You got to get signed in. You look like an idiot. And you know, the first couple of minutes are just like, are they coming? Are they coming? So <laughs> fantastic. Honey, what a pleasure to have you on the show. I'm a huge, huge fan, Mark. Let me tell you something. What a set of pipes on you. Rock and roll, just you know, pipes on you, and also, you, you know, you, you're just funny as hell, man. You're just funny as hell. Well, thank you very much. You're far too gracious with that, but uh, it's, a, it's a plague. I will take whatever compliments I can get, and I am gobbling them up. Thank you. Keep them coming. Oh, why not? Hey, why not? So you sent me your bio, and I wasn't surprised, you know, that you started singing at, like, 11 years old. Yeah. Did you get beat up a lot? I was, I was the baby of the family, and I, uh, I learned early on, probably by five or six, that I had to sing for attention or had some kind of routine. Otherwise, nobody was interested in talking to me at all. So uh, some of my earliest performance memories are breaking into my older brother's parties downstairs, and I needed some kind of a shtick. They were in their early 20s, and I was six. So wow. I would break in and, yeah, I would tell dirty jokes and sing Aqualung. And, you know, that was kind of my Aqualung. whole thing. Yeah, that was my oh, big move. He got his nose. That was, that was my big move. Dude, nobody could sing Motley Crue like you, man. You just, you, you just like, wow, I'm blown away every time. But uh, <laughs> so, were you from Jersey City? Jersey City. I grew up in lovely, scenic Jersey City, New Jersey. Um, yeah. right outside of Bayonne and, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it for the world actually, which is where I get my, no, no but you better have a good stick man, with the, with the crowd. Yeah, thank you. Oh, look at that hair. Look at this haircut. What the, uh, what is good, happening man. with this? How are barbers <laughs> not? Skater. You look like the skater. <laughs> you there? Oh my God, I love this. This is awesome. I'm sorry, I'm losing you. Do you hear me there? Yeah, I can hear you. It's no problem. I can, we can still see you oh, and we can hear you. you. Yeah, we can see you, we can hear you. And uh, what are you doing with your Dorothy Hamill do? What are you doing? <sighs> I, I'm an animal control officer, uh, which turned out to be incredibly satisfying uh, uh, career choice. 
Uh, I remember being in, being in the local health department and looking over at the side room and there was this man with a Oh, you muted yourself. And oh my the dog in his office. So I, I, I finally, I couldn't, I, I couldn't, I couldn't unsee this visual. And I walked over and I said, this, what, what is this? What do you, what do you do? He said, well, I'm the animal control officer. And I said, that, that sounds like fun. They, they pay you for this? And he said, yeah, it's a real job. I said, well, like legal tender, you don't get paid in beads or something. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's real United States Treasury issued currency. Um, and he assured me it was, and I looked into it, and I was doing it for a living within a year. And now I've been wow. doing it for the past eight years. Wow, that's phenomenal, man. Yeah, it's I mean, what, what a, what a, a, I'm so glad to hear that. Good for you, doll. That's awesome. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. So you're animal control officer by day, and you're like a rock star comedian by night. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Although since I'm working for um, the government now, I've curtailed um, some of my live stand-up because everyone has gotten so humorless. And I mean, I can't imagine a worse time to be attempting to be a stand-up comedian right now. I, no one, no one can laugh at themselves. No one could laugh at each other. No one even knows what the hell they're talking about. Everybody's opinion comes from a meme or someone else's opinion that they copied and pasted. I, I am so glad to not attempt to navigate these waters and still be naturally funny because the ugly reality is not a lot of people are laughing at a lot of things. Wow, wow, wow. There's no substance, man. It's like, wow, that, that, that's a, a wonderful observation, man. Wow. Yeah, it's um, whether, whether your politics are, or are left or, or right or, you, you know what I mean? You're an anarchist. That never used to be the way we identified ourselves. That was not, that was not our defining characteristic. And mm. so it is. And it's, it's, it's just pointless and stupid. And believe me, whoever's watching, whatever your politics are, you are way more invested in their success than they are in yours. So smart mm. now. What a good point. Wow. Steve, I love it. Take your attention away from these people and put it on ourselves, man. Wow. Yes. And, and just, just let your eyes and common sense and your own morality be your guide. You know, don't deny what you're looking at and insist it's not real because someone told you it isn't. Trust me. Yeah. When did, we, when did we get to these people that have so little faith in our own intelligence and our own right. heart and your own moral compass? You know what's right and wrong, what's really happening around you. Look around. Word, dude, word. Yes. That's really difficult. It's a difficult time. You see people that are just like live it like that. They're like, you know, you're going to believe what I tell you. You're going to believe what you see. And it's real. It's rough. You're right. Right. Thank yeah. you for bringing up that point. I'm really, you know, really yeah, surprised. It's, 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 really a very, it's really a very strange time. And it's um, like I've got, I've got some friends who are. No matter what the president could ever do, he's absolutely dumb and wrong. And no one's that far off base. And having got other people that are convinced that this whole thing is some kind of liberal conspiracy, this whole for fuck a, a liberal conspiracy. Jesus Christ, they can't organize an election or an impeachment. You think they brainstormed a pandemic? <laughs> Jesus, they can't they haven't had a decent candidate in eight years. You think they can work out a pandemic? Jesus, honey, stop that! You're not you, you you're not attempting comedy. It's hysterical. It's so true. Oh, they 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 plan this whole whole friggin' thing, man. It's it's insane. Yeah, they're not that smart, yes. exactly. But um, just for the record, because I'm not sure who's watching, I want to say I'm a very big fan of the Clinton family and Hillary in particular, and I'm a big supporter because you never know. I don't want to end up hanging myself in my bathroom. Big, a big supporter of who? I didn't even hear it. It stopped. I, I'm, I'm making a disclaimer that I'm a big supporter of Hillary because I don't want to end up hanging myself in my bathroom later. Yes, I was wondering. Support that, Hillary. Support the stuff. Stop what you had. That was the Darcy Hamill. 
Honey, let me tell you something. I was, I, you know, I'll, su I'll support a cantaloupe before I can vote for our current president. I, uh, you know, I, I, I just can't do it. Like you said, you know, with my good conscience and my good sense, I can't do it. So, you know, that's that. I mean, wow. I don't. How are you doing in your house, man? How are you? How's you? How are you and your wife and everybody doing? Locked up and your animals and all that. You're not well, working right now, are you? Oh yeah, I'm still working. Animal control does not cease, so we are still working. Um, which now I'm finding a blessing. Uh, it's nice to be able to get in and out of the house, but um, of course, there's a lot of downtime during the during the quarantine, and it's. I, I, I've learned a couple new skills. I've learned some accomplishments, um, and it's really nice. I've perfected eating eight days worth of supplies in 90 minutes. So that's, I'm very proud of that. Yeah. Um, Last hurricane I, we had I, in New Jersey, I ate all my supplies before the storm actually hit. It's like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's really, it's, it's, every once in a while I fall asleep. But other than that, there's a lot of eating happening. There's a lot of eating. Um, I've mastered the Hardy, I, re, I brought back the Hardy Boys haircut. Um, so Sean Cassidy, I, I know you were rocking this at one point. But I've taken over. Uh, Did you cut that yeah. yourself? Did you cut your hair? I, my girlfriend actually cut it. My girlfriend Heather cut it for me. Oh, fantastic! Yeah. I'm seeing a lot of a lot of butch hair right now on you dudes, man. A lot of yeah, guys no. letting the girls don't let don't let the girls put the scissors in your hair in the hands anymore. <laughs> I don't know what to it's do about it. It's a little uneven. You got a little puff on the right side. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's foot loose and thin. Free. What I got to do is hire somebody to walk in front of me with a fan, and then I'll have like this blowing <laughs> action. You know, it's yeah. I, I'm really it's looking into. <laughs> oh, but other than yeah. that, it's it's all going well. We we have uh, we're trying not to go too crazy. We've got four beautiful cats. Uh, my girlfriend's a vet tech, so she's very big into animals. We've got some fish. We've got. She just. Uh, you wonder why Amazon is cornering the market. She ordered caterpillars on amazon and now we've got this little plant apparatus thing with butterflies in it six of them emerged today so now now we're growing butterflies in the house yeah it's uh, oh it's time yeah, to get outside uh, yeah, it's, yeah it, it is definitely time to get outside but i mean i don't know at one point someone asked me what do i what do i picture myself doing five years from now i said trying to make it out of april 2020 that's what yeah Oh yeah, it's a joke. I mean, we're just like two days into a two year, you know, of, of failing economy. It's it's like everybody's worried about their rights getting outside. You better be, you worry about your right to eat and keep your lights on because it's yeah, yeah. The, the if there's if there's ever a part of me that is looking forward to ending this, it's it's certainly not so any of us can socialize. It's so people who are self-employed in small businesses can stop worrying about how they're going to keep the lights on and get back to work. But I, you know, I'm sorry that, that we are all unable to go to the park. I mean, when it was open, how often did you go? Now suddenly you're, yeah. you're going to risk everyone's life. Go hang out at a park yeah. that you couldn't be interested in for the last 40 years of your life. Yeah. You got to see these kooky people in California, man. Newport Beach is full. Malibu Beach is full. Like, go home. You know, it's like you're 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 endangering endangering everybody to sit on the beach, packed, and you're not even in the yeah. water. You just and it's, and it's and it's 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 not that it's not that complicated. You know what I mean? Let's just ride this out, get to the other side of it, pick up where we left off, and get started. And I'm in Bergen County, New Jersey, and we are we are hit as hard with this as anybody in the country right now. We've got 16,000 presumed positive cases. We've got over 1,000 deaths. Um, so if you're in a part of the, of the country where this is not so real to you, enjoy it. It's not fake. I assure you, it's not fake. And the logic that, well, how many people do you know that are died from it? See, it's fake. That's the equivalent to me of saying, no one's broken into my apartment. The locks on my doors are fake news. I don't need them. What are you talking about? Be glad you're not sick. That was the point of the shutdown. Terrible. Got how many people died? If, if they want to know, I believe it was like 225 people died today in New Jersey. So yeah. there, there's yeah. the statistic. Just yeah. all they got to do is Google it's it. Hitting, it's hitting really close. 
No, oh, it's bad, man. It's like, I'm really worried. I'm the, my whole family's there. Yeah, no, it's hitting, it's hitting close to home. So, so one of the things um, that my friends and I have started doing, some of the musicians I know, we've started performing shows from inside our living rooms and um, accepting donations in a tip cup and then turning around and giving those donations to the wait staff of whatever venue we would have been playing at. And it's, um, we, we think it's, a, it's, it's, it's really therapeutic for the performers. It's a lot of fun for the people in the audience who are watching it at home. And we are showing up for some people, cooks, waiters, maitre d's, bartenders, people who, for whatever reason, aren't going to be getting a big stimulus check or unemployment or what have you. And we're showing up with a couple hundred dollars and saying, here, go get yourself some toilet paper and some ramen noodles and survive this crazy thing. Um, and okay. there's, there's a lot of talented people in New Jersey doing that. And it's, I'm really proud to say uh, that I'm one of them. And it, it feels really good to try and turn this into something positive if we could. Absolutely, man. I, I caught you on uh, Facebook in uh, the one night where you were supposed to, I forget which bar you were in, but you know, you're also helping some fantastic entertainment for us. And, you know, that's the deal is everybody can pitch in this, you know, a little bit and it really, it really snowballs. You know, it's Diane Brennan, I, I in interviewed her yesterday. She made masks and, you know, she got on, my show actually got in on Bayonne for the, uh, for the, the food bank, the founders food bank, you know. Because, oh, fantastic. Uh, I got a chance to advertise her, not me, but we got a chance to get out and advertise, you know, what she's doing, so. Yeah, Diane and Keith are amazing, aren't they? Oh, man, come on. I mean, they're just, yes. how many, it's not fair. They got, they have, they're so talented. I mean, it's just like, they're like, they could do everything. And their history was a lot of fun, yeah. so so that's fantastic, Mark. Where are you going next? Where what what bar? Uh, pretend bar. You know where are you playing at next? My my next live event is going to be a week from tomorrow, um, and uh, we are going to be virtually live at the Welling Grill in Bayonne on um, Broadway, and it's what grill? The, the, what grill again? The Welling Grill. I think it was Odd Fellows at one point. If, if that rings a bell for you. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah, I'm not familiar with, with a ton of them either, but um it's it's a good thing. It's it's fun to log on. I'm reading along while I while I perform and my girlfriend's shouting out some of the worst insults at me so I could stop and engage in real time. Um last week, last Friday, we raised a thousand dollars for the staff uh. at at the Vic, yeah, thousand dollars. Vic, wow, fantastic. Yes. That's yeah, so when you divide that between five and six people, is it going to change anyone's life? Of course not. Can you keep your phone on and fill your tank of gas and and put some cans of soup in the cupboard? Yeah, it can. And sometimes that's that's the difference between packing up and giving up on his shit and thinking, you know what, I can hide this out. So that's what we're trying to do. It's it's not ex it's not extravagant. But, um, you know, I've, I've accepted grudgingly, I accepted that I can't change the world, but that doesn't mean I can't change somebody. Just one person, man. That's what I yeah. love. You know, you give one person, you give, you lift one person up, man, and they're not, they're, they're not so desperate a second later and think about the tremendous thing that, that, that you did. I just, I just love that. I just love it. I just, I just. I think that's what our mission is anyway in life. You got it. You, ha you know, yeah. if you're not out there doing a little something, you know, to, to, to help somebody, you know, feel a little better than I, you know, I just don't, I'm, I'm not sure, you know, why we're all here. So thousand dollars is a lot of dough if you ask me. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, I, I, I think, I think we've made, we've made the pursuit of wealth and the worship of money really way more important than it is other than competing with each other over who's is better i'm old enough to know that there's not really the satisfaction in that that i need to get up in the morning um and i i find putting a smile on someone's face as corny as it is to just be way more satisfying and that's oh, just yeah. me what can i do maybe i was born in the wrong time no way, no way, Jose. You know, if you're not making somebody laugh, what's it all about? You know, really? and, and people, you know, 
I'm sure people are commented on here, but I have I don't have any I don't have uh, somebody writing. So later on, I hopefully somebody came in and you know chimed in and said hello to you and wrote some comments and you know, dude, I never I didn't know you were so deep. I didn't know all that depth and wonderful. Uh, I had no clue. I mean, I kind of had a clue because uh, you know it is what it is, and you know you're always out there, you know, entertaining people. But um, you know, I give you a lot. I'm just I commend you for you know just having some a little bit of common sense and a big heart. Well, just to just to get back on track, I do still enjoy drinking very much, and my girlfriend has extraordinary breasts. <laughs> Dude, you were like slamming down those drinks on, on that show. I was like, yes, yes, you go, boss. The last yeah. one weekend, man. You give me hope. <laughs> Yeah, I was doing I was doing my Jim Morrison impression on that on that first one. That's that that's a it's a bit of a blur by the end of that. But um, I didn't I didn't get escorted off the stage by the the Metro Dade County Police Department. So I guess it was okay. Yeah, yeah, because you were home. Yeah, right. <laughs> that helps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, did you go up and, yeah, it really helps. But you know, when you when you're home, man, oh man, you know, I mean. I just love that the conversation got switched around and I thought we were just going to talk about, you know, um, you know, what you did when you were 11, what you did when you were 12. And uh, actually, I did want to talk about, though, I did want to talk about the fact that you did go around, you did do comedy all about, um, I, wrote, I wrote the places down. You actually did Catch a Rising Star, Caroline. I mm -hmm. mean, and also, I wanted to ask you too, and then we'll get back to uh, the coronavirus. Why don't Dude, you gotta and don't don't be mad and don't mock. I mean, you gotta you have to try out for the voice. It's I've heard that and, and and I do hear that. I I don't and thank you. Um while the people on those kind of shows are amazing and are singing, I mean they're just extraordinary. And uh, most of them have a, have an instrument better than mine that they've worked harder on than I have. It, it's it does for, for me the singers I've always enjoyed. Everyone from from you know Paul Stanley to Elvis to Sinatra to David Lee Roth. I don't know if any of those people shine in that environment. You you know you know what I mean. It's I, I'm much more. I'm much more moved by the texture and the pain in someone's voice than the skill of it. If 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 that makes sense, some of my favorite singers I don't think would ever place on that. Yeah. All right. So I mean, I get that you know it's all about an, your instrument, your vocal instrument. But dude, boy, what an instrument you have! I mean, it's just. And although rock and roll does not go far on the voice, you also do oldies too, right? So you could, you know, you could go back oh, yeah. and forth. Yeah, you have an oldies band as well. You could go back and, I mean, I, I just think that you're a voice contention winner. I know it's douchebag and all that, but I still think that, you know, you have an incredible instrument. I just, it, it like blows my mind at how well. When I look at you, I'm like, he can't sing that. He can't sing this too. It's, it's, it's like, Wow, it's really, it's really, um, who is your, is your family? And I know you talked about your family, but where do you get this? You know, I, I know it was natural born talent. Where do you get this uh, instrument from? I mean, I mean, both, anybody both else my parents, both my parents considered themselves singers. Um, and they were both very good at it. So there was always music in my house. Um, my brother could sing a little bit. And um, as far as my sister singing, my brother could sing a little bit. Um, <laughs> So, but my sister bit. likes to consider herself. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. My sister would consider herself a singer also after oh, a wow. martini or two. But yeah, it was a musical house. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> after a martini or so. But dude, you you can sing after like 90,000 martinis. Let me tell you something. When I used to go to New Jersey, I, I and, and, and I will stand here and I will tell anybody that Bayonne or Jersey City, wherever you guys are singing out, has the best cover bands in the world by far. I, I'm telling you, um, she said no, and uh, and the Big Apple. I mean, man, wow, 
Wow. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. And I have, um, it's funny, I, I have some friends between uh, Danny Reddick and Lisa Ross and, and, and Keith Morelli. Wow. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, th there are times where I'm not even the best singer in the room. <laughs> and that's a, lot, that's a lot of my gigs. Uh, really, I, it's, it's, it's an amazing hotbed of talent. Richie Galtieri, I mean, there's so many people that are just yeah. amazing. Yeah. It's, um, it's, and it's, it's, it's the, the competition amongst us all is a friendly, healthy competition. Everyone's trying to shine because the person next to them has them inspired not to outdo them, which is why, it, which is how you're supposed to feel about your fellow musician. Wow. Your, your only competition is yourself. The only person I'm ever competing with is me today. Am I better tomorrow than me today? And that's how a lot of us feel about it around here. And it's, it's very nice to share music and make music with each other around here. Oh yeah, I mean, come on. I've been begging Lisa for years to go to Manhattan and be in, be in do theater because her voice is like, so theatrical, besides rock and roll, fantastic. And I think it could be uh, because we're so close to Manhattan that it's such a hotbed of musical talent. My God, it's like, it's really uh, by far to me, you know, maybe Louisiana, but I mean, boy, what a musical culture that we have. You know, and rock and roll is still alive and well. And Oh, know. yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Because, uh, um, I don't really see too too much rock and roll, you know, the emphasis on rock and roll lately. But um, I see that Bayonne and uh, you guys and everybody keep keeps that alive, man. I mean, it's just it's just incredible to me. But uh, you sang in the limelight. I used to love the clubs in the '90s and all that. I mean, of some, course, some of it's, it's a different time. Yeah, yeah. Um, the New York City of of the mid to late 90s was probably the last real New York City there was before it became this homogenized Starbucks New York City version. I mean, back then it was still, there was still an element of, I, I hesitate to say danger, but certainly unpredictability of what was going on there. And now it's, well, it, it's, it's the stuff of legend, like the stories my brother and his crew used to tell us about the same thing. Um, I'm, I'm really glad to have caught the last tale hurrah of original New York. And the mm -hmm. limelight and um, Webster Hall, the Cat Club, wow. the Moors, they were, they were the last taste of that. Right, right, right. I haven't spent a lot of time in New York since the 90s, man. It was, it was incredible. Then you go back and it's Disney and it's, uh, you know, but yeah. uh, it's still epicenter, man. They got hit hard too. But I mean, the most New York was just devastated, devastated by uh, by the you know the, the coronavirus. It's just like when you see the pictures of it, it's completely empty and deserted. It's mind blowing. Yeah, it's okay. it's mind blowing. It's I, it's mind blowing. I, the only thing that could ever shut New York City down was this. Wow. You know, when you put it into perspective how, you know, through 9-11, we lost maybe almost 4,000 people and they just lost 10,000, 10,000 New Yorkers. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. an, it's an episode. I, you know, I pray every day. I'm a, I'm a Jesus freak. I pray every day. Just please, please come up with a respectable and a legitimate, um, you know, uh, medications and some, you know, some, uh, some real, real um, things that we can do to like slow down the virus before it gets cold out, man. I'm I'm yeah. concerned. I'm concerned about a second wave. Yeah, I mean every every pandemic that's happened historically, the second wave was more fatal. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's yeah, it, it, history only tells us it's going to be. Um, I I'm going to I'm going to practice as many safety protocols as possible and get on with my normal life. But I'm not one who's, you know, got his mask in his back pocket. And this is all fake. It is most certainly yeah. not. And, and uh, yeah. yeah, we're up there, you know, we're, we're keeping on top of our vitamin regimen and, and our immune system over here. And just an eye on Watching all of us getting to the other side safely. 
You gotta wash your hands. You gotta keep washing your. You washing your hands? You and your girl yeah. washing your hands? Oh yeah. Oh, you yeah. And my hands? vitamin C. Vitamin C, dude. I've been popping vitamin vitamin C chewables like the cow and garlic. You gotta eat lots of garlic. Yeah. No, I'm 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 popping I'm popping vitamin C like I'm 16 years old and it's masculine. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. Me too. Darling, what else? Tell me something else. Anything else? What else are we up to, Beth? What else? What else have we learned during this pandemic? Tell her to say hi. We Tell learned... her to say hi. Heather, must hi. <laughs> My girl, hi, honey. My friend Heather. Um, one, of, one of the things we've learned is that um, let's see, if, if you wear a uniform to work and you have not been at work in some time. I advise you to attempt to put that on now and get an idea of what kind of damage you have done. Because I assure you, it, it's, it, it is going, it ain't it is going to be, oh, it's gonna be a rude awakening. Last, oh. last week I sneezed from my allergies and mint chip came out of my nose. I'm telling you, it's a, <laughs> it's a bad situation. Oh shit, that ain't good. That ain't good. Oh my God. Yeah. Mark, thank you so much, honey. Thank you for coming on. Uh, I really Dina, the pleasure it. was mine. Miss you. We miss you back here. I'll the be place, back. the place hasn't been it hasn't been nearly as cool without you. Oh, that's super that's super nice of you, darling. You take care. Thank you. Keep fighting a good fight, all right? Yes, you too, doll. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.